In 2008, a young engineer called Hans put the finishing touches to the first release of his new build tool. He had been a deeply frustrated software developer who found the build tools of the time more of a hindrance than a help. Hans loved dynamic languages, so he set forth to create a better build tool based on the JVM language Groovy. The only thing left before his first release was to come up with a name. His original idea was Cradle, which he wasn't totally convinced by since it wasn't exactly unique. But this would not be any old Cradle, he thought. This would be a Groovy Cradle. Or maybe even a Gradle. Yes, Hans decided, I will bring Gradle to the world and finally pull software development out of the Dark Ages. And maybe he wasn't wrong. Little did Hans know, as he pushed the 0.1 Gradle release in April 2008, that just 13 years later, 38% of all JVM developers would be using his tool. That would be 13 long hard years though, because in 2008, Java projects were almost exclusively being built by one build tool, and that tool's name was Maven. The Java build wars were on, and things were about to get very interesting, as Gradle would slowly but surely take a bigger piece of the pie. Stick around to learn what Gradle did to cause project after open source project to jump the Maven ship. But first, we need to go back even further to 2001 to witness Maven's humble beginnings in, of all places, Alexandria. But not Egyptian Alexandria, where the River Nile meets the sea, but Apache Alexandria, the project in which the first lines of Maven were written. An innovative developer named Jason was working on this project and later the Apache Turbine project, where he was constantly grappling with build files of the then popular Apache Ant build tool. There was no easy way to templatize these Ant build files and every single project seemed to do things in a slightly different way. There must be a way to make these builds more reproducible, Jason thought, with a common project layout the build tool would expect by default. In a glint of his eye, Maven was born. Using Apache Turbine as its testbed, Maven 1.0 was released in 2004. This build tool was something very different. Whereas with Ant, you had to tell it step by step what it needed to do to build your project, Maven was opinionated and assumed you would need to compile, test and package your software. This meant that Maven's XML build files were more concise than Ant's and developers could more easily switch between projects. As if that wasn't enough, Jason had one more killer feature up his sleeve. At the time, developers would commit any libraries their project depended on into version control. This practice annoyed Jason. No, it really upset him. Not only was it a waste of storage, but with Ant, there was no way to perform any dependency analysis. Maven 1 onwards let you declare dependencies in your build file. And here's the magic. When you ran your build, it would then download those dependencies from a central repository Jason had set up. This also paved the way for features like dependency resolution. If Maven found more than one version of the same dependency, it would be able to pick the most suitable and only add that to the compile and runtime class paths. Maven made a small ripple in the Java community. That ripple became a splash and eventually a huge wave as project after project made the switch from Ant to Maven. One of the first was the popular database mapping framework, Hibernate. Like with any changes, there would be those that would oppose the switch, but it didn't matter because by 2009, all the big open source Java projects would be built using Maven. Spring, check. Hibernate, check. Lucene, check. But as you know, dear viewer, the story doesn't stop there. Because although Maven fanboys thought they'd reached the ultimate build nirvana, it wasn't quite good enough for our friend Hans. He envisaged a build system that was easier to maintain, more powerful, and most importantly, faster for developers. What Hans had in mind for his groovy cradle, his Gradle project, was a leap into the unknown, but he had a burning desire to make things better, and that counted for a lot. The first killer feature was Gradle's Groovy DSL, a way to declare your build concisely with a Groovy domain-specific language. 
There would be no wordy XML files, just concise Groovy which allowed you to write code directly in your build file. Gradle's code-first approach also meant that writing custom plugins was more straightforward than with Maven. At first, there were a few positive signals, just enough for Hans to know he was heading in the right direction. The next killer feature was the incremental build system, something Maven was lacking, and something most developers at the time didn't even consider a possibility. If you've already compiled, packaged, or tested your project, when nothing's changed and you run the same command again, Surely there's nothing for the build tool to do. Exactly, and this feature meant that building greater projects, especially after making small incremental changes, would be a lot faster than Maven. By 2010, Gradle started to get more attention. The Hibernate project, which just a few years earlier had switched from Ant to Maven, would now jump ship again to Gradle. The growing Gradle team focused on adding more useful features to make developers' lives easier. This included a dependency management system built from the ground up for better conflict resolution, caching and reliability. Importantly though, Gradle still relied on the dependencies themselves being pulled from repositories like Maven Central. It also supported publishing libraries in a Maven compatible way, including generating the infamous pom.xml file. This ability to keep what was good and only change what could be made better allowed Gradle to make big strides forward. By 2013, it had been selected by Google as the default build tool for Android, and by 2015, it had reached 1 million monthly downloads. Now Gradle had a seat at the build tool table, and when developers embarked on new projects, they were genuinely asking themselves whether they should use Maven or Gradle. So what's the state of play now with these two JVM build giants? Gradle is currently the most popular build tool for open source JVM projects on GitHub. But that doesn't include the thousands of private repositories belonging to individuals and companies across the world. In this recent survey of JVM developers in general, 76% said they use Maven, whereas only 38% use Gradle. If we look at the historical data though, there is an upward trend, so it would be fair to say that Gradle usage will continue to grow in the next few years. But if Gradle genuinely is a maven killer with so many features that help developers' lives easier, why doesn't everyone use it today? Developers on maven projects might just be comfortable enough not to make the switch. They know that things are far from perfect, but they don't think they can justify the time investment in migrating their project to Gradle. In this case, these projects fall into two broad categories. Category 1 is historical projects that were created in the heyday of maven, Back when making a change to your build involved rolling up your sleeves for some old-fashioned fisticuffs with an XML file. They are legacy projects and don't see any active development except for minor bug fixes. In this case, staying with Maven is a reasonable choice since the rewards of switching to Gradle are minimal. Category 2 is different though. It's the projects that are still under active development where the build is slowing down developer productivity but nobody really realises it. It's like trying to write a novel while simultaneously having a WhatsApp conversation with your gym buddies and at the same time eating a Chinese takeaway with chopsticks. Yeah, no wonder you didn't get past that first page yet. Because as developers sit at their computers waiting for slow builds to run, eventually it becomes normalised. They convince themselves that's just how things are and it doesn't get any better. They pretend to do productive work while their build is running but get distracted and forget where they were due to all the context switching. Can Gradle projects be unnecessarily slow too? Absolutely, when incorrectly implemented. But at least Gradle has the framework in place to fix these issues and eventually lead to more joyful development and increased productivity. If you've seen any of my other videos, you'll know that I'm somewhat biased towards Gradle. But that's because I genuinely believe it can make a difference and there are many, many teams out there that aren't aware how much more productive they could be with Gradle. So what next? You could spend days, weeks or months trawling through the Gradle documentation or alternatively take my free course, Get Going With Gradle. It's the fastest way for Java developers to get to a working knowledge of Gradle and also helps anyone who's already using Gradle to properly understand the fundamentals. Now over to you, what do you think? Is this build war still raging 
Or is it time for Maven to be consigned to the Apache Project graveyard? Let me know your thoughts below.